God, let me tell you something. You preach the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ, and it will slay everything but Jesus Himself. I said you proclaim the cross of Jesus Christ. It's hard to stand in a pulpit or stand on a street corner and preach Christ and Him crucified. And watch that cross utterly lay bare everything but Jesus Christ. It takes faith. And he said unto them, Who is them? That's us. That's the church. That's disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. The commandment is for you and I here tonight. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Turn to Romans chapter 10. Incidentally, that word preach, it means a public crier, public herald. And you know, we can look at this commandment on an individual basis. We can apply it individually, and that's true because we're all individually called to go and to preach the gospel. But you know, when we look at it individually and we assume that, well, somebody is going, then it might not just get done if we don't all seek to obey that commandment. So let's look at it on a corporate level. The church is to go into the public forum and to cry and to herald and to interject the Word of God so the world can have a light in the midst of darkness. If the church is not in the public, in the open air, declaring the Word of God, then we're not fulfilling the Great Commission. That's an absolute, friend. That's the truth of it. How then shall they call on Him in whom they have not believed? How shall they believe in Him of whom they have not heard? How shall they hear without a God of public trial? For after that, in the wisdom of God, world by wisdom knew not God, it pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to say this, that God's ordained method and means in evangelism is preaching. God's ordained mean for evangelism is preaching. That's what God has called the church to do, to be a mouthpiece, to be a vehicle of expression for the Lord Jesus Christ. We have no other reason to exist but to preach and to live this gospel. There is only one pattern for evangelism, and it's contained in the Word of God. And God's method is to preach this gospel, to preach it without apology, to preach it under the power and the authority and the unction of the Holy Ghost. All God needs is a militant church for the Holy Ghost that will go into the highways and the byways and once again take the reproach of Christ and proclaim Him crucified. There's somebody that will be willing to proclaim the Lord Jesus Christ. He doesn't need talent. He doesn't need intellect. He needs a yielded vest. If we're going to fulfill the Great Commission, there is a way. There's a prescribed pattern and an order. I said there's a way and we've got to follow that way. The church is filled with tears, friend. I can tell you it begins at the foundation. Amen. Well, they, we, we, we can get folks to the altar, but we can't get people to Calvary. Amen. We can talk folks into praying a sinner's prayer, but because the gospel is not really preached, because there's no conviction to the heart of man. Amen. The law of God is not thundered with divine authority, and men don't see their great need to be delivered and to be saved, then they don't see Christ the Savior. So let a man come under conviction. Let the law of God show him that he's undone and Christ becomes altogether lovely. And this is again what we must come back to where we're going to preach the gospel in power and in faith and believe. Now, let me tell you something. You preach the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ and it will slay everything but Jesus Himself. I said you proclaim the cross of Jesus Christ. It's hard to stand in a pulpit or stand on a street corner and preach Christ and Him crucified. And watch that cross utterly lay bare everything but Jesus Christ. It takes faith. Do you understand? There's a way. It's not going to seem like it works to the natural mind. It's not going to seem like the most profitable way to do things. It's not going to seem like this is not how to really establish a church or build a church or see people come to the Lord Jesus Christ if we do it according to the divine pattern. Even the Bible. And that is the true Word of Almighty God. And the true the work of God is always birthed out of adherence to the Word of God. And you know, to suggest that God would reward or to suggest that anything other than Christ could truly succeed. Now listen to me. There's a lot of things that appear to succeed. 
There's a lot of things that appear to work. But truly in the Spirit to suggest that we can step out of God's order and be blessed is a lie from the pit of hell. But that's what the church in this hour has promoted in regards to evangelism. We've got to go back to the book as a spiritual man. That's what God has given His Word. As a divine God, He's given us His Spirit. In all things, if we're conformed to the Word and we're led by the Holy Ghost, then we will remain in the way. You hear people talk in this hour. They talk about loving the Lord with all their heart and wanting to see souls blessed. Well, Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandment. There's a way. There's an order. And if a man is not fulfilling that command of Christ according to the Word, then he's deceived himself in believing that he truly loves anyone, including God himself. And we've got to do that regardless of men's opinions or the response of the wicked. That's number one lesson in evangelism, because the temptation is to change the message, to become pragmatic, to do what appears to work. You know, about 30 or 40 years ago, the church of the world told the church, don't preach to me. That turns me off. I've heard pastors and preachers say, if you come to the first church, we won't preach to you. Oh, what a terrible and an awful thing to say. What a terrible, that's like telling a sinner, I'm not going to pray for you. If praying for you offends you, God ordained preaching. We must preach whether they like it or not. The great problem with the professing church today is her independence Independence from God and her uneasiness with His Word. In other words, there's just a subconscious thought that this is just a little bit outdated, a little bit old-fashioned, that 20th century America is not going to receive the message of a first century peasant. Just, we've got to change things. You know, the crowd would rather hear a little rock music or see a mime or something you know, offensive rather than preaching the gospel. It's a divine, authoritative declaration of the Word. Word of God. If you want to talk to me, you and I can sit down and you might feel comfortable with me. But let a man preach the gospel. People come into a church or under real preaching, they say, I feel like you're talking down to me. Who do you want to talk to? Who do you want to hear from? If God speaks through a man, if any man speaks, let him speak as the oracles of Almighty God. If men hear God speak, then God is sure enough going to be talking down to them. It's the authority. Rebellion is exposed. And you and I are the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. He said He was anointed to preach. And so are we if we're in Him. And we don't have a special anointing. We've got the anointing of Jesus. Confronted with biblical evangelism, most churchgoers today say you'll never win anyone to Jesus with these methods. Or they might suspiciously ask, you know, how many people have you prayed with? How many times have I been asked? I've been preaching open air for 16 and 17 years. I've probably prayed with about five people on the street. Of those five, I don't know any of those five that are still serving God. You say, well, why are you doing it? Because God. Somebody's come to Jesus? Yes, people have come. The one plant, the one argument. And you know what? God said, the one that's so, and the one that waters. It's God that gives me So what are we after in this world? We are to preach the gospel, whether it appears to work or doesn't work. We are to go and we are to declare the word of Almighty God. First Corinthians 1 and 18 says, For the preaching of the cross to them that perish food. It's absurdity. That's what that word literally means. Or it's silly. How is this going to work? How are you going to see men come to Christ? It's offensive. Yes, it is. It's offensive to tell men they're on their way to hell. They're wicked and they must be born again. There's no way to change that. There's no way to alter that. Now, when I was a young Christian, I, used to, I went to a place where there's nothing but hippies and drug addicts. And, you know, I just passed out tracks here and there. I didn't know what to do telling people Jesus loves you. They'd take the track, tear it up my face threatened to, to, to hit me or, or to tell me, leave, leave me alone. What is this? How, how, how am I going to bring people to the Lord Jesus Christ? This seems so offensive. And people would tell me, no, I just took what Jesus said in red. And I went on the street and all I did was say what Jesus said in a normal tone of voice to people and they almost stone drug me down the street. Listen to me. If you'll just speak the words of the Lord Jesus Christ, He said the servant is not above the Master. If they hated me. They won't hate you. 